Hi and welcome, I'm Andreas. This is how I've stacked my toolboxes in the last couple of months. I've bought a couple of new tools and they mostly came in these boxes and so here are some, there are some, there's a stack behind there. Not a good solution because as you can guess the one you need is always that one. So I decided to do something about that. Much better, don't you think? So I've got a nice cabinet with drawers and all of these boxes now are individually accessible. I can pull them out completely, open the lids. So if you want to know how I built that, stick around and let's get going. pieces are cut. This is the material for a narrow uh, cabinet with one column of drawers and this is the material for a double one with two columns. It's the tops, the bottoms, the sides and these stri strips here are the bottom layer and a reinforcement layer at the very bottom where the casters are going to be uh, attached. So the next step is to drill the pocket holes. used um, my router table very often yet but um, I'm a bit surprised about how badly this goes. As you can see I only moved the piece very slowly but still I got a lot of hits and a lot of tear out and large splinters coming out. I'm not sure why that is. Um, if you have any idea I'd love to hear it in the comments. Um, I think for today I'd call it quits. It's already half past 10 in the evening so I'm going to work on this tomorrow and maybe just use the handheld router. Now a bit, I'm a bit puzzled as to why this isn't working so well. I think I know what the problem was. Maybe you saw that there are this time two large pieces came off but they could come off and they could fall down and they were out of the way. 
And the problem with the router table here was more the fence, I suppose, than the router table itself. Because I don't have a proper fence. As you could see, it's just a board clamped to that um, fence. And all those pieces collected in that little cavity. And so the problem, I suppose, is not the router table, but that I don't have proper dust extraction. And so those large pieces collected there and built up and then they would get in the way and block the, the pushing and so on. So what I really should do with that router table is build a proper fence with dust extraction. Um, but for now I'll just use the handheld router and this seems to go okay. And then I'll get this done and then I have on my mental list that um, building a proper fence for the router table would be a good idea. So I just had this cabinet on the floor and I thought well this looks a bit too low in comparison to my workbench because you see the idea of course was that the cabinet with the top and the coasters will be just as high as the workbench but it isn't so it seems that when I made the calculations for the height of the sides, I somehow thought that the cross pieces would be on top of the sides and the bottom piece would also be on top of the sides. And so these sides are too short by twice the thickness of this material. Which to be honest really pisses me off at the moment because well, with this project a lot seems to go wrong. The next question is will the inside be high enough for the boxes just as I calculated it? I only roughly calculated it. It's one of those moments where I suppose it's best now to leave it for today. It's quarter past ten in the evening anyway, so I'm going to think about it. Is it better to put a double layer of material at the bottom than get it higher so that everything is the same height? Would look shitty, but well, they're all glued up now, so it's no taking them apart again. Well, let's see tomorrow. Okay, I've checked and one, the, one, of, one part of the solution that I came up with is I got these bigger coasters which are just about the same amount higher than these are too low. So with these underneath um, the height will be the same as the workbench which is what I want. Um, or I have to say with one of those cabinets, the larger one it will be like this. This one is going to be for my drill press anyway and it's very unlikely that I will use the drill press table for a level surface with the workbench. So with this one it's not a big deal that it's a bit lower but with the other one which could be used as a workbench or for putting stuff on it um, I'm going to use these larger coasters. And I checked the, the height here and with the boxes that I want to fit in here it might just work. It will be a very close call if I can make all of them as slides. Maybe I have to put the, the, the bottom box in without slides and that will be a minor nuisance but not of such a big deal. So it's an, a very stupid and a very, very annoying mistake but 
it looks that I can like I can fix it at least to be a, a satisfying solution. So let's get on with it. Um, I'm going to put the back panels in, I'm going to put the tops on, then do a rough sanding and we'll coat the insides with the first layer of oil because that's much harder to do once the drawer slides are mounted and then when the oil is dry I'm going to mount the drawers. So let's get going and hopefully I'll bring this to a good end. It's time to mount the drawer slides. I don't know about you, I have always been confused about the different varieties of drawer slides that there are. So for this project I got in contact with Hettig, which is a German manufacturer of high quality drawer slides, and I had a couple of conversations with them about which types there are, what to use and so on, and uh, it made it much clearer for me what to get and what types there are in the first place. And I made a whole video about all these different questions about draw slides, which I'll link to in the top right corner and in the description. So if you're interested in that and have been confused like I was, that might be a video for you. So I got these draw slides now and I have to mount them. And to determine where they go, I measured the height of the boxes here and added the thickness of my material. My uh, drawers will just be the shelves. There will be no carcasses. So I just add the thickness of the material plus some gaps so that the box, the, the, the drawer doesn't slide against the box. And now all I have to do is add these up. I did the math here with a table, added the height of the box, then a gap, and then the material, and, and did this for all the boxes that I want to store in this. And now I can um, mark these. I'm going to use a story stick, which I got here by Woodpeckers. Um, no uh, commercial, no, no advertisement. I just bought this. Um, I really love their tools. You don't really need this, of course, you can just measure, but as I said, I love their tools. And even though they're ridiculously expensive, I wanted one. So I'm going to use that and then you can just make your markings here and then add the drawer slides and mount them and that's what I'm going to do now. Well, just as I was about to install the second slide, um, I double checked the height of the future drawer and it turned out it is too low. Well, thinking about it, when I lost those 3.6 centimeters, um, because I made that mistake I talked about earlier, um, I lost basically all the, the wiggle room that I had to have some gaps between the drawers and the box boxes. And with this one here, this is going to be my drill press cabinet and I gave it an extra thick top, which is one centimeter thicker than the other one, which of course, as they're both the same height, 
makes that inner room one centimeter lower than the other one. And I hadn't thought about that when I made the calculations. So let's call this officially, let's make it go down in history as the worst math project that I've ever built. Because the, those 3.6 centimeters that I lost through my earlier mistake are really coming after me all over the place. So I'm not going to be able to use it as expected. One of the boxes will not fit in here. I have to come up with a different storage space for that and I'm going to make a regular drawer up here which is just the right height then. Um, maybe store drills or whatever. Um, it probably will not be bad to have a drawer underneath the drill press but it's still really annoying that I will not be able to store the three boxes that I had planned here. But it's, it's not an option to knock everything down so I'm going to go ahead with it. Still annoying. Anyway, let's get going again. fixed and for up here I've made a regular drawer because there wouldn't be enough room for another L box as I had planned because of my strategic mistake. So that for that drawer the glue is drying at the moment and now that all of the drawers fit I'm going to add the extra screws because for the fitting process 
I've only attached each drawer um, with two screws and each roller also with two screws so that they could be more easily removed if need be. But now that everything works, they're going to get the rest of the screws so that they can actually hold the full load. Then I can attach the casters and then I'm done. Now, I'm very glad to have this build finished. Everything is now nicely sorted and I can access these different boxes very easily in contrast to what it was like before. There was quite some frustration in this build and I've learned a lot from those mistakes that I made. And in this context, I made two additional videos. One is my usual what I learned video in which I discuss my mistakes and what I learned from them. And the other is a whole video about different types of drawer slides and with what you can use for what. And both of those videos are linked to next to me here on this page. And I hope you'll check them out as well. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to watch inspiring videos in the future and learn along with me on my woodworking journey, make sure to subscribe and never miss another video. If you want to make sure you get a notification, hit that bell. And I hope to see you on the next video. Until then, bye bye and take care.